instructions. Good morning. Good morning. Such power. Good morning and welcome to Harrisburg United Methodist Church. Um, for those of you online, we welcome you into the sanctuary here this morning. Um, and if you are new to us, if you would fill out a card in the pew or online in the space, um, just to tell us who you are and we would like to greet you properly. So welcome. I have a little announcement. We got an award. Catherine wanted to thank us that her team raised the most money for the bowl for better. And so she is so thankful that she brought us the little thing to hang on the wall, because we are so thankful. She was so appreciative. I want you to remember, next week is goodbye. The 10th is hello. Register, if you don't know how to register, call Shirley in the church office and she'll take care of it. Just guarantee it. Okay, so don't forget those things. Um, the flowers this morning are given to the glory of God in memory of Annie Louise and Wayne Hoover and Ronnie Hoover by the Blankenship family. And I, if you notice, there's two stoles on the altar. During the hymns today, I invite you to come up and pray on them. One is for Tony Ruth and one is for Wes. Um, and so you might want to say a prayer over top of them as they go on to their new mission field. So in, um, in pretending that I'm Tony Ruth, I'm going to ask you all to take a deep breath and let it out and prepare yourself for worship. Our call to worship this morning. We gather together to worship, knowing that God is already here among us, knowing that there is nothing that separates us from the presence of the Lord. Wherever we are, wherever we go, God is near. So let us enter into this service of worship with confidence and hope knowing that God is already with us and that he stands eager to meet us and bless us with his love. Wherever we are, wherever we go, God is near. Let us stand and sing our first hymn. Praise the Lord, the Almighty. <laughs>
Good morning. Good morning. Um, before we get into the service, I just wanted to, to update you on a few things from the annual conference. Shirley and I and Wes and Tony Ruth have been um, at Lake Junaluska this week with Holy Conferencing. <laughs> And I will have to say, it's, it's the first time that we've met in three years because of COVID. And I'll have to say I was a little bit apprehensive about going, mostly because of COVID still going around. And then some of it's because of some of the dissension in the church. But um, it was really, really good to catch up with people that you had not seen in several years. Um, uh, previous ministers, old friends, acquaintances, and uh, catch up on how everybody kind of navigated the uh, pandemic environment. Um, as I said before, I was a little apprehensive about attending because our denomination is going through some dissension and division. And But what I found at the conference was an atmosphere that was tranquil, filled with peace and with grace. This year's conference focus was connect, imagine, and engage, or re-engage in God's holy work. We are to reconnect with and re-engage the Holy Spirit to help heal wounds, and these are wounds for all people. What is impossible for us is very possible with God. I returned late yesterday, last evening, and a little after 7.30, so I haven't had an opportunity to really document all the business portion uh, of the meeting, and I'll address that in more detail at a, a later date. Um, but I wanted to share with you a message from our Bishop, Ken Carter. And the man is so full of grace. God could not have put a better man in this conference at this point in time in, in our church history. But he said that there are differences, there are different interpretations of the issues that divide us. Many times those interpretations are formed or influenced by where you begin, meaning what you have experienced in life. Uh, in that regard, we must show each other grace and respect as we work through uh, these different opinions and interpretations. And I will have to say during the business voting, I've, been, I've gone for quite a few years now, and there have been times that you're like, please don't anybody else get up and speak. It's hot in here, I just wanna go home. <laughs> but it ran so smoothly, and this, God was in the midst of all of this. And I am so truly thankful, and I, I think you, you guys would be too. If you ever have an opportunity to go to annual conference, a lot of people go, mm, business. But the worship there, um, the spirit is in that place, and I would just encourage anybody that wants to go to go. But as United Methodists, we are called to love Christ, to go out and make disciples, and to transform the world. We are to love others, as Christ loves us. Um, we need to focus on two truths. First, God is the same as he has always been. He has never and will never change. Second, Christ died for our sins and was resurrected. We either believe these truths or we don't. And we, as United Methodists, believe these truths apply to all God's people. Sorry. Okay, now I know where I am. <laughs> uh, let us pray. Oh, Father, we come before you with thankful hearts for all the blessings that you have given us. But today, we are especially thankful for fathers. For fathers still with us who are there day in and day out for our families. They, they love 
They sacrifice to provide. They try their best to protect their families and pick us up when we fall. For the fathers who are no longer with us, God, give them a hug from us and let them know that they are loved and missed. Tell them how grateful their sons and daughters are for the love and devotion that they gave us. For those fathers who have lost children or grandchildren, Father, wrap them in your Holy Spirit and comfort them as only you can. For the men who never were given children to love, bless them, O oh God, for the times that they have given of themselves to surround others with a father's love. Father, for all these men, we give you thanks. We pray for our pastors who are, all way, who, who are away doing holy conferencing. We pray for United Methodist Church that we may hear your voice and unite our hearts. We pray for all those who feel left out of your church because of who they are, what color they are, or who they might love. We are all your children, and our job is simply to love each other. We pray for all the pastors who will transition to new church homes in July. May their new church families welcome them with open arms and open hearts. We lift up all those who are struggling with physical and mental illnesses, all types of addictions, loss and loneliness, hatred and abuse, financial challenges, family issues, and a host of other challenges that life just seems to keep piling on. Father, hold each of them in your care as they deal with these challenges. Father, we ask that you open our eyes to see when others need or are suffering and stir our hearts, stir in our hearts an overwhelming desire to be your hands and feet. Finally, help us to be patient and kind to all who do not think, believe, or act like us. Help us to love like Jesus. And now may we pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen.
please join me in um, praying the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of the Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Our scripture reading it comes today from Hebrews um, chapter 10, verses 19 through 25. And this is taken from the New International Version. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain, that is, his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswaveringly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. This is the word of God for all people. Thanks be to God. Now, if the children, ages three through first grade, would like to follow Miss Carol Lee into children's worship, um, we can stand and sing hymn number 273, Jesus' Hands Were Kind Hands. Good morning again. <laughs> I love that. I'll never get tired of that. <laughs> Thank you to Rebecca and for Gwen for help leading this worship service this morning. And may I just say, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. I have to do this for Wes if he's watching. Just saying, I love that that got a laugh at both services. I love it. So I was listening to Wes's sermon last week, and I was sitting back there with my husband. And I want you to know he's not here right now, my husband, but he has heard this sermon twice because I went over it last night with him. And then he was here at the early service. So I just don't want you to think that he left me. He just, you know, he's heard enough. <laughs> So anyway, I was listening to the sermon with Wes, and I'm thinking he's talking about you guys having spiritual gifts and how he has seen you using those gifts. And I'm sitting back there going, but I was going to say, how are you using them? So that's not going to work today. Thank you, Wes. I have to start all over again. Then I went to annual conference, and all these wonderful preachers are preaching, and I'm writing down, I need to say this, I need to say that, I need to say that. I went home, and I was up until midnight trying to rewrite my sermon. I said, Wes, I just, you know, I'm beside myself. And he goes, a sermon is never done, surely. Well, that's not good for me to know right now. <laughs> so when I am perplexed, honestly, when I am perplexed, it's time to pray. It's time to pray and find out what it is that I'm supposed to be doing. The other problem I have with this is I often get the same answer from God. 
And I don't know if that happens to you, but it happens to me all the time. He's always saying, dig deeper, Shirley. So I dug deeper. And so here we go. <laughs> the first word took me back. Therefore, because that's telling me, Shirley, got to go back and find out what happened beforehand. Therefore, because this happened, you have to do something else. So what happened before? It was talking about biblical times in worship. And it was talking about the Holy of Holies, the place where the Ark of the Covenant was kept. The place that was the presence where the presence of God lived behind this giant veil of curtain. No one could go in except for one priest once a year who I imagine, and it says he had to go through all kinds of rituals in order to get clean enough to crawl through and be in the presence of God. Being in the presence of God, I would think at that point would be terrifying. Everybody wondering what was going to happen when you went in there. I love the translation of the message because it just says, so friends, you can go now right without hesitation. Walk right up to God in the holy place. Jesus has cleared the way by his blood and sacrifice. Just walk right in. Digging even deeper, that takes me back to Matthew to listen to that scripture. And behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook and the rocks split. Jesus' sacrifice for us removes our barrier to God. Jesus ushers us to God through the curtain of his body. When I was growing up, my best friend's name was Debbie Ruddle. I have lots of stories about Debbie Ruddle and I, but I'll only share one. She was Catholic and I was Methodist. Now, I had no idea there was a difference between the two. I didn't know. And so one day we were playing church. And um, I said that we should pray. And she said, no, you can't. Only the priest can pray. You're not good enough to pray. And I'm like, I am sorry, I can pray. And she said, no, you can't. And I said, well, let me tell you this. We pray at my house and in my Sunday school room where I go to church, there is a cardboard phone booth. And I can get in there and I can talk to God and say whatever I want. So yes, I can talk to God. I know that Debbie Ruddle was trying to tell me about the hierarchy of church. I just assumed my church was higher on the level to heaven than hers. I couldn't talk to God. As a child, I had absolute confidence that I could talk to God. There are some days when I still wish I had that childlike feeling of absolute confidence. So the curtain splits. And you know, what I'm about to say is not written anywhere. There is no statistics for what I'm about to say. It's just my opinion. Please keep that in mind. But it is my opinion that when that curtain split and the earth shook and the rocks broke, that in a couple of days there was a committee together trying to figure out how to sew it back up again. <laughs> I mean, doesn't that make sense? It's who we are. Everything changed. We got to fix that. A lot of people were probably not on board. I'm bringing my sacrifice of animals to the temple and I'm not supposed to do that anymore? That's the way we've always done it. We need to fix it. We need to feel normal again. Does that sound familiar? The truth is the change is hard. It's uncomfortable and frightening. And maybe it is because it directs us to reflecting on ourselves and our personal commitment to God. Have we gotten too comfortable? Maybe we're looking at this pastoral change a little nervous. I hear you. 
Why does it have to change? Why does the Methodist Church do this? Can't everything be the same? I have to wonder what we're so scared of. It might be the challenge that God is asking us to step up, that God is asking us to support, that God is asking us to pay attention to him, for he knows what's best for us. Maybe we need to be feeding more than we just need always to be fed. Maybe we need to look in the mirror and look down into where our heart is to remember what we believe. Have we gotten too comfortable? Being a Christian for me, being a follower of Jesus has not always been comfortable. No, I haven't been imprisoned and I haven't been, you know, um, having to, you know, hide my faith because of the reactions of people. That hasn't happened to me. But I have been ridiculed, and I've been told that I was wrong, and I've been teased, and I am, as I stand right now, out of my comfort zone. And the, faith, the truth is my faith wavers at times. I hide from God when he asks me to do something. Every time he's tapping me on the shoulder, I'm like, that's not God, that's, yeah. Just like Adam and Eve hiding in the bushes so that nobody knew what their sin was. Guess what? He knew. He knows us. He knows us inside out. And just like Adam and Eve, there were consequences for what they had done. But he clothed them and he loved them just as he loves all of you. We need to have absolute confidence in the belief in our God. The theme at annual conference, like Rebecca was saying, was connect, imagine, and engage. COVID-19 has tried to separate us from each other, and it's time for us to find new ways to reconnect with our relationship with God. Imagine new and exciting missions and to love the world in the way the world is today, to engage the spiritual gifts that God has given each of us to fan that flame inside of you of the Holy Spirit. Do we lack confidence in our belief? So often we believe until we don't anymore. What I mean by that is I have, have talked with people who have prayed, I have prayed with them for weeks on end about, you know, a healing and Somebody's in the hospital and they're not going to get out and all of a sudden they are healed and even the doctor says it's a miracle. And then three weeks later when you go for your checkup, the doctor says, well, we didn't know this and we didn't know that and we didn't know this. And we scientifically talk ourselves right out of the dang miracle. We believe until we don't anymore. We must have absolute confidence in our belief to proclaim that Jesus' sacrifice has ushered us, ushered us into the presence of God. You may have heard this story. Following the Civil War, a very frustrated and dejected Confederate soldier was sitting outside the White House, and a young boy approached him, and he said to him, why are you so sad? The soldier said, I need to see President Lincoln about a certain injustice I am facing. And every time I go to enter the White House, the guards block the door and turn me away. The boy motioned to the old soldier, follow me. When they approached the entrance, the guards snapped to attention, stepped back, opened the door, and let in the boy and the soldier. The boy proceeded to the library where the president was resting and introduced the soldier to his father. The boy was Tad Lincoln. The soldier had gained an audience with the president through his son. We are given an audience to God through God's son, Jesus. 
Are you ushering people to God? Isn't that, it was, isn't that what the scripture tells us to do? Is it not an instruction, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit? Ushering people in to this place, ushering into people into the love of Jesus. There's no preachers here today. Dick Prentice came in my office last week and he looked at my order of worship. Nosy, huh? Checking things out. <laughs> it was right there on the counter. He said, Who's preaching? It says, No preacher here. And I said, well, that's my sermon. There's no preacher here today. No preacher here today. AV team showed up. Choir showed up. Gwen showed up. Rebecca showed up. The nursery people showed up. All of you showed up. The people online showed up. Praise God. But there's no preachers here today. But we all have gifts, don't we? We all have gifts that we can share with the world and share the love of Jesus with. There's no preachers here today. Now, I don't want to be getting no email that says Shirley doesn't like preachers. <laughs> don't, be, don't be telling people that kind of stuff. It's not true. I love my preachers. I love Tony Ruth and Wes, and I love Richard, and I actually love every pastor that came before even I was here from the beginning that set a foundation for Jesus to be known in this community. And I am excited about Pastor Frederick coming and what he is going to bring to us and the pastors after that and the pastors after that. Because I am telling you my prayer here, Lord, is that when all of us here, even little Joey, all of us here are in the church triumphant, this church will still be sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ to this community. I want you to know that you have a mission here from God. We don't just sit and wait and say, well, there's a new preacher coming. Let's see what happens. We have work to do. God has work to be done. He created each of you for ministry. Somebody might be sitting here today contemplating whether they should be a missionary in a foreign land. And then there might be the person that has to go to Food Lion and the girl behind the register is crying because somebody had just spoke nasty to her and it's your job to say, honey, it's going to be all right and I appreciate what you do. Spiritual gifts are wide. The fruits of the Spirit are for all of us. Are you perplexed about what your job is? If you're perplexed, I invite you to get into that cardboard box, phone up God, and talk to him about it. You have a place. You know it. I'm looking around the congregation. I'm pretty sure in John LaMonica's workroom, he's probably close to God. Is it a place that you've made a worship center in your spot? All these musicians here, I'm sure it's through music. Where do you feel closest to God? Today is Father's Day, and I have always, always known the place where my father spoke to God. From the time I was a little child, I always knew, and it was in his gardens. He had both vegetable and flower gardens. The morning that the hospital called, and by the way, I picked up the receiver from the wall. <laughs> When the hospital called to say that my mother had passed away, I was looking out the kitchen window and I saw my daddy. I can see it as clear today as ever. He was on his knees in the garden. He was taking the leaves he had put in the fall over top of the tulips and the crocuses and he was pulling them away and he was on his knees. I walked out with a cup of coffee Regular, that's sugar and cream people for people not from Philadelphia. And I went to hand it to him and he looked up at me and he said, your mother is gone. Before I said a word, he had been in that garden with God all morning. 
I am imploring to you to draw near to God. You have a direct line. The curtain is open. You can go right in. In the name of Jesus, amen. I will ask you now to stand as we affirm our faith from Romans 3, 35, 37 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No. no. In all things, we are more than conquerors. We are sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. I want to remind you that there is a um, there is a plate at the back for your offering this morning. If you're online, um, there is a link, and we welcome you to give as you are able. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, with these gifts, we commend ourselves anew to being your faithful disciples. Just as you followed the will of your heavenly Father, even to the cross, so we will follow you. We pray that these offerings may be used by your church to further the kingdom, and we ask that you will use us to seek and enlist the all the new disciples. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, as children of God, let us sing what we already know. We are the church. on you but this is one of those songs that need to be sung out like you can't believe that we are the church okay so we want to hear that okay and look at your neighbors off and on while you're singing it because that's who you're singing to okay we're gonna try this again Gwen thanks <laughs> she loves me <laughs>
just want to remind you that Saturday the food trucks will be out here again and um, during that time there's going to be kid versus adult Olympics. <laughs> so come prepared to do the Olympics, whatever your oh, yeah. thing might be. I guess they'll instruct us, I don't know. But anyway, it's gonna be fun. Come out. Um, this this event is to try to get the community to come and say also say goodbye to Tony and Ruth and Wes. It's the beginning of the weekend of that. So come and enjoy, bring your friends, um, help us with the food trucks, it'll be great. There's gonna be two and one of them's having ice cream, so I'll be there. <laughs> um, don't forget, hello, goodbye, register called Call the church office and surely they'll take care of it. I am going to invite you to sing the benediction with me today. It's on 668. I got Gwen. want you to remember that when you go out in the world today, you may be the only Bible that somebody reads. Represent it well. Amen. Amen. Amen.